what is an ERP system and how is it structured, what are the most important transactions and the processes and data elements that are related to them, and what is the difference between master and transaction data. All of that you will learn in that video. Hi, I'm Robert and on this channel everything is about the digitalization of business processes. And if you are interested in these topics, I recommend a subscription. If you take it seriously with the digitalization of business processes, then you have to take your company's ERP system into account. Because normally that is the heart of every modern company. Because of that, in that playlist, we start to delve into ERP systems. And SAP will be our example of a modern ERP system. We will see all relevant transactions, modules and data objects and that as much clearly and practically as possible. In that first video of the mentioned playlist, you will learn the basics of ERP systems. Thus, what is an ERP system? How is it structured? And in the second part of the video, you will learn what are transactions and what is the difference between master and transactions data. Okay, let us begin directly. ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. Actually, it says everything. It's about managing or planning all the resources of a company holistically. All resources means all essential things that a company needs for its value creation, for example, finances that are spent and received, persons such as customers, suppliers and employees, or material such as products that are produced or raw materials that are needed for that production, or even machines that are necessary for value creation. In the most cases, it's like this. If one of these resources is changed, that affects many other resources. For example, if a part is produced in a machine, then a raw material becomes a semi-finished product. An employee is needed to operate the machine and costs arise. So the raw material costs money and the employee also wants to be paid. And an ERP system managed exactly all of these resources. But it not only takes care of these complex connections between resources, but it also plans them. For example, before a raw material can be produced on the machine, it must be ordered in advance so that they are in the warehouse on time and can be made available to the operator of the machine. Even if that sounds complex, Actually, ERP systems are structured very simple. Essentially, they consist of two main components. On the one hand, there is a huge database that stores and describes all of these resources in detail. All employees, customers and suppliers are listed here along with their data, but also the material data and all orders, invoices, cost centers, bill of materials and stocks. All of these data is stored statically in that database. So that huge database that describes all resources of the company is the first of two main pillars of an ERP system. The second pillar are transactions. Transactions are small subprograms within an ERP system. There are hundreds of them and each one reflects exactly one process step in a company and accesses the needed data and changes it. For example, in SAP, there is the transaction MMO1, which is only there for the purpose if you want to create a new material. If you want to order a new screw, it is not yet defined in the ERP system. You call transaction MMO1 and create this material. In that case, you would only access material data and you would add a new entry there. If you want to order the screw, 
you can call transaction MA21N. That transaction accesses more than just the material data. Of course, purchase orders, supplier data and cost centers are accessed too. Because someone has to deliver the screw and someone also has to bear the costs for the screw. In addition to the transactions for defining materials and creating purchase orders, there are, as I said, many, many more transactions. Every one of them accesses and modifies the data that is needed for the purpose of the transaction. Many people struggle because of that strange when the named transactions abbreviations in SAP such as MMO1 and ME21N and these are also quite unsuitable for keeping an overview of the huge amount of transactions in an ERP system. In SAP there is a tree structure that organizes all transactions thematically. If you understand this tree you will understand SAP. It's really that simple. For example, we can click into this tree structure and find the transaction for maintaining the material data. You find that tree structure in the SAP menu on the SAP Easy Access. We have here, for example, a folder with logistics and here you find everything that has to do with material management, sales and distribution and for example production. And under accounting, for example, you find all the transactions that have to do with finance. And for example, under human resources, you find all the transactions that have something to do with the employees, for example, paywalls and so on. But we are looking for material transactions and we will find them, of course, under logistics. Here we see, among other things, the transactions folders I have already mentioned for production and sales and distribution. Obviously, material we find under material management, material master, and here is the folder material. And here we have all transactions that have something to do with material. For example, to change material, to create material, to view material. But there are also transactions to see the history of changes related to material data or transactions to process large amounts of material data at once. And here we also see the transaction codes again. But you can also see that you don't actually need them to use SAP. If you want to look at an existing material master record, then of course we now select display. And you see there are two transactions for that purpose. MMO3 to look at material data records in its current status and MM19 to see material data records at a specific date in the past. That could perhaps be interesting if we want to see how much the material used to cost or where it was previously stored in the warehouse. But we want to look at a material data set in its current status and what it currently looks like. Thus we select the transaction MMO3, we then simply click on it to start the transaction so the small SAP subprogram for displaying material starts. So now we have to specify which material we want to see. Thus we have to enter the material number of the material we are looking for. For example, we want now like to look at a ballpoint pen and enter its material number. For example, B1172. You might ask yourself, great, how should I know this number? And this is a very good question. Many people think that way and I even believe that SAP has an unfair bad reputation, especially among beginners because of this belief. Of course, you don't have to know this material number by heart in order to search for a specific material. You can simply click on that icon 
and a small window appears, in which you can search for material according to different criteria. In that case, we just search by name or the material description. We enter ball and now we see all material that have ball in their name. And here is the ballpoint pen we are looking for. We just select them, press enter. And now we see the data of the material master record broken down into many different views. What we see here is the basic data view one. Here we see for example the right of the ballpoint pen and its common unit of measure, piece for example. And here we see all other views of that ballpoint pen. For example, the MRP view 2. Now we have to select the plant for which we want to see the master data because obviously the data in the view MRP 2 depends on the plant and the storage location. And now we see, for example, that the pen is produced in our company and it is not purchased from a supplier. Material data is master data. Such a material data master record only describes the material, but just because there is such a description, that does not mean that this ballpoint pen is actually physically located somewhere in the company. That information is stored in the inventory data so that, for example, 300 pieces of that pen are in a certain storage bin in the warehouse. In contrast to master data, this kind of data is called transaction data. And we will now take a deeper look at these differences between master and transaction data. But before I start, I will answer a question frequently asked by my subscribers. How can you train yourself in SAP quickly, easily and cost efficiently? In that context, I can really recommend the training platform from Expresso Tutorials. Here you have access to about 300 video trainings in English language or more than 100 books about SAP. You have learning paths. Choose a learning path, for example, first steps in finance. And you then just work along that path with video trainings and books in order to reach your learning goals. You also have certificates answering about 100 multiple choice questions and then you get your certificate for an SAP subject or just use a chatbot that is trained for your questions about SAP. And you get all of that for 19 euro per month and you can test it in a seven day trail for free. Okay, let us continue with the difference between master and transaction data. The material master record is a data record that describes a material and such a material description changes relatively rarely and is used again and again. If something has to happen to the ballpoint pen, for example, if it is ordered or stored or delivered. Such a master data record makes sense without the context of other data. I like to compare master data with an empty ghost company. A company only described by master data would look like this. There are personal files that describes employees, but there are no real employees in the company. The company would have machines, but there would not be running. The company would have a warehouse with many storage slots, but all of them would be empty. Because of that, 
data like this is called master data and the data that is based on them is called transaction data such as customer orders, production orders, inventory, deliveries or material and finance movement data. Thus we could say this kind of data brings our company to life. This can be for example the working hours that employees are clocked in or inventory data that describes what is currently stored on the storage bins in the warehouse or the times in which machines are used and certain work processes are running. In contrast to that master data, transactions data changes frequently and is only of short-term significance because for example the inventory is constantly changing and a production order or a customer order is completed at some point. In addition transaction data is usually based on master data. For example a purchase order only makes sense if the material to be ordered is defined. The clocking in of an employee only makes sense if it is known which employee does the clocking in. In the next videos of that playlist we will take a deeper look into the master data of production and procurement. And then I will introduce the heart of each ERP system, the MRP run. Smash the subscribe button and you will never miss out that videos. By the way, a special thanks goes out to Info4MD service that provide the SAP system for that training videos. I wish you a nice day, your robot.